In today's video, we're going to take a look at three rock stars or bands who tried to save Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver frontman Scott Weiland. Bursting onto the scene in the early 90s, Stone Temple Pilots had almost immediate success thanks to their 1992 debut record, Quart. The band would continue to have sustained success throughout the rest of the decade in the early 2000s before their breakup in 2002-2003. Wylan would go on to play with the supergroup Velvet Revolver, which featured three members of Guns N' Roses, before he finally reformed with Stone Temple Pilots and played with what would be his final band, The Wildabouts. Sadly, Wylan would pass away in December of 2015 while on tour with The Wildabouts, being found dead on the band's tour bus as a result of an accidental overdose with alcohol and drugs found in his system. In 1992, Stone Temple Pilots would tour with Megadeth, and Megadeth leader Dave Mustaine would reveal to Loudwire in 2015 that while on tour with STP, he gave some advice to Scott Weiland, telling them, It's really peculiar the way things went down with me and Scott, because I was in Finland doing a rate a record thing for a magazine one time, and they had given us the core record to review, and I was listening to it and I thought, either this is a really bad joke or these guys are going to be massive, because they've got a sound that's very similar to a lot of the great bands that that are in the alternative scene right now, but I don't know if it's a parody or if it's the real deal. Impressed, Mustaine requested the band to open for Megadeth on their Countdown to Extinction tour, which they did. Mustaine would admit to helping the band rearrange their songs on their set list to help the flow of their live shows. He would add, The thing I regret was at the end of the tour, I told him, Look, Scott, you're going to be huge, you're going to have money, you're going to have drugs, and it's going to be everywhere. And I said, If you do anything, stay away from heroin. Mustaine would criticize those who were close to Wyland in his final years, claiming that they probably took him out of rehab too soon soon so he could start making money on the road. He would add, no song, no performance, no amount of money is worth a human life, and I think that the music industry suffered a tragic loss, but as much as the onus is on Scott for doing it, there are other people that are responsible for that. In 1996, KISS would reunite with their original lineup, and Stone Temple Pilots were supposed to open a handful of gigs for the band. Stone Temple Pilots would release their third album in 1996, titled Tiny Music Songs from the Vatican Gift Shop. STP's tour to support the album was hampered by wild addiction and the band would have to pull out of supporting KISS on a few dates, including playing at Tiger Stadium in the summer of 96. Ironically, the band that would be replaced by Stone Temple Pilots would be Alice in Chains, whose frontman Lane Staley was also dealing with addiction, and the band also didn't tour very much to support their new album at the time. KISS's Gene Simmons would tell Detroit radio station WRIF 101.1 FM radio, I met Wylan at a club and I said to him, look, you gotta be straight, cut it out with all the heroin and crap, respect the fans, get up on on the stage, do a great show, it's all yours, we'll support you, but I want you clean on stage. He told me, Gene, I promise, it's like what anybody who's a drug addict and alcoholic says. I've been clean for a million years and stuff, and then he died. And I don't believe it when they tell me they've beaten their addictions. If you were an alcoholic or a drug addict, you're going to be that for the rest of your life, and that's what they tell you in AA and other organization, that every day it's going to be a decision. You're going to have to make that decision to be straight or ruin your life and hurt everybody around you. Formed in 2003, the supergroup Velvet Revolver would feature three-fifths of Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion lineup, in addition to frontman Scott Weiland and guitarist Dave Kushner. Scott would be the last member to join the group, as the band would spend nearly a year looking for a frontman. Scott, who was newly out of Stone Temple Pilots, would nail the audition, but almost immediately he would disappear, being held up in his LA apartment doing hard drugs, while his wife was in San Diego with his two kids. Scott had already been to rehab about a dozen times, and his bandmates in Velvet Revolver had already dealt with their own addictions, with some of them newly sober. It would be bassist Duff McKagan and guitarist Dave Kushner, who are now sober, who thought they could help Scott finally get clean. But rather than taking him to an expensive rehab, they opted to take Scott up to McKagan's secluded cabin about 150 miles outside of Seattle with one of Duff's martial arts instructors. The time at the cabin seemed to help Scott rebalance his life, and the band was able to finish up their first record, 2004's Contraband. But the band would only put out one more album, 2006. 7's Libertad, and the following year the band would break up. The catalyst for the breakup seemed to be Scott's brother's death, which set in motion a chain of events in which the frontman started hitting the bottle pretty heavily, and it created tensions with his bandmates, and he soon had disputes with them over songwriting and royalties. Wilde would be fired by Velvet Revolver due to his erratic behavior. It was following his passing in 2015, his former Stone Temple Pilots bandmates would issue a statement that read, We were deeply saddened to learn of the loss of our old friend and bandmate Scott Wyland. We experienced a good chunk of life with Scott, and even in his darkest times, we all had hope and love for him. His artistry will live on. Of that, there is no doubt. 
That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in Rock Roll True Stories. Take care.